Any questions at all for our panel of ghost writers? Uh, yeah, this is for the whole panel. What's your favorite kind of ghost to write for? What? No, they don't write for ghosts. That's not... Oh, why did I think this would be a good idea? This video is sponsored by Colin Broom. I think it's safe to say that last year, Jeanette McCurdy really set the standard for celebrity authored books. If you're unfamiliar, I'm Glad My Mom Died is an autobiography written by Jeanette who played Sam on iCarly back in the day, about life growing up as a child actor, her relationship with her mom, and what happened after her mom's death. It became super popular, it was very well written especially for a debut book, and Jeanette got a lot of praise because she wrote it without a ghostwriter, which is a tactic that celebrities trying to enter the world of publishing typically like to employ. The book sort of became a pop culture phenomenon and in my opinion set the stage for the celebrity tell-all to make a comeback in the zeitgeist. Prince Harry's autobiography Spare made some waves earlier this year if you remember, although that was more of a traditional celebrity book because it was ghost written, meaning someone else took his ideas and experiences and, you know, put them into a consumable structure for somebody to read. But what happens when a celebrity writes a work of fiction alongside a ghostwriter? Sure, it's been done before, but the reaction to Millie Bobby Brown's new novel 19 Steps has been rather severe and I want to talk about why. But before we get there, we have to talk about today's sponsor, Colon Broom, and if you haven't already guessed, it's gonna get a little personal for a second. Let's be real, we can all probably use a little bit more fiber in our diet, and our bathroom habits definitely reflect that. And if you've been looking for something to help keep you a little bit more regular, Colon Broom might be a good answer for you. Colon Broom is a high fiber dietary supplement that uses the highest quality ingredients to support your gut and microbiome health. The main component is psyllium husk, which is scientifically proven to treat intestinal problems and benefit constipation, diarrhea, blood pressure, and and even weight loss. And not only can Colon Broom keep you regular, but it can also help you in long-term ways that you might not have expected. It can visibly improve your skin health, lower bad cholesterol, and lower the risk of diabetes by slowing down the absorption of sugar in your system. I've talked about this on this channel before, but I am a very picky eater, I always have been, so do I always hit my fiber goals and get the right vegetable and fruit intake every day? No, and so I'm always looking for stuff to help me in that goal. Luckily for me, Colon Broom tastes great, it's easy to incorporate into my daily routine, and without getting too much into the weeds here, yeah, it does keep me pretty regular. Colon Broom is currently running their biggest sale yet, you can get up to 65% off on a six month supply, and if you use my coupon code Kayla says, you can get up to 10% off on your order. You're not gonna wanna miss out on this limited time offer, once again, you can use my code Kayla says for up to 10% off, and thank you so much again to Colon Broom for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar, Millie Bobby Brown is an actress who got her big break as Eleven in Stranger Things. She's had an interesting trajectory in her time in the spotlight because Stranger Things has pretty much been her bread and butter for a while now, but she also starred in a couple movies like Enola Holmes, which is a Sherlock Holmes spinoff, I believe. Anyway, I have always been sympathetic to Millie because if you're unaware, a few years ago, she was the target of one of the most unfunny memes of the 2010s. Basically, people started spreading this copy pasta where they told fake stories of her being a violent homophobe, and she was like 14 at the time that this was going on. On. It was never funny. If you ever thought it was funny, I probably don't think you're a very smart or kind person. On top of that, because Millie got famous as a child, there have been a plethora of people online making some unsavory and creepy comments toward her throughout the course of her adolescence, and in some cases, literally counting down the days until she turned 18. All of this to say that Millie Bobby Brown's relationship with the internet historically has not been the greatest, and I feel like she gets a bad rap a lot of the time when she doesn't deserve it, but alas, today, there is discourse to be had. Earlier this month, Month, Millie Bobby Brown released her debut novel, 19 Steps, a piece of historical fiction that takes place during the 1943 Bethnal Green tube disaster. According to Millie, the idea for the book came about after listening to her own grandmother's account of the event. But it might surprise people to hear that you picked a topic, a World War II era fiction. Yeah. What drew you to that? Well, when I was little, I went to go stay with my nan, my grandmother, a mm -hmm. lot. Um, and she would tell me stories from her childhood living through World War II. And I, when I got older and started kind of getting into the industry, I thought these stories felt so important to me. And I was really passionate about bringing these stories to life. Mm -hmm. So 19 Steps happened. And um, I was really happy to put all of those stories on, onto paper so that I could really immortalize my grandmother's stories and her presence. Now here's the thing, this book is ghost written and that's never been a secret. On Tuesday, Brown posted an image on Instagram of herself holding the book standing next to her ghostwriter Kathleen McGurl with the caption, I couldn't have done this without you. 
The post was met with a lot of backlash because while ghostwriting is not new, many people believe that there is a distinction between a celebrity slapping their name on a book that is essentially a recount of their own experiences to someone trained in crafting a written narrative versus a fiction book where the whole appeal is the words, decisions, and viewpoint of the person writing it. And ghostwriters are no doubt used to this, they don't go into these jobs expecting all of the credit, but I guess it's worth asking the question of whether or not Millie Bobby Brown's name should be on the cover of this book at all. I personally have mixed feelings as someone who in real life makes a living writing the words that other people say. If you're new here, hi, I'm a broadcast news producer, but yeah, that's what I do. A lot of times it's literally my words coming out of a news anchor's mouth, but at the same time, it feels bigger than that because the words that I write in a script get passed through several different eyeballs before they actually go on TV. Usually a producer above me will copy edit my work, and then an anchor will typically go through and make any personal changes or suggestions to make it fit more of their personal reading style. So as a piece of content goes through production, a lot of times the line between ownership and authorship does become blurred. If you're curious about the process in regards to this particular book, McGirl explained in a blog post back in March that she was sent a lot of research that had already been pulled together by Millie and her family and plenty of ideas. Millie and McGirl then had a couple of Zoom calls before McGirl wrote the first draft. Millie continued to send the writer ideas via WhatsApp and the book went through several drafts as the pair refined the story. So based on that context, how you feel about Millie's ownership over the book comes down to what you personally believe, right? Because art is often a collaborative experience and sometimes you need people with different skill sets than you to bring your vision to life. But on the other hand, not everyone needs to be an author, especially because the publishing industry seems to get more strained and homogenized as the days go by. So while ghostwriters know what they're getting into at the end of the day, is it a healthy aspect of the publishing industry to be promoting multiple best-selling books by people who clearly did not write them? And of course there's the question of access, because there's probably plenty of people out there with great ideas for books, but who don't have the name recognition to get a publishing deal, and nor do they have the money to hire a ghostwriter to do a lot of that hard work. So like I said, the book was released earlier this month, and the reason we're talking about it now is because the reviews are in, and they are rather mixed. But even though it's clearly a ghost-written novel, Millie is the one getting all of the hate for it, and I'm perplexed as to whether or not that's really fair. This all started a few days ago when a user on Twitter posted a link to a review of the book alongside a screenshot of its first paragraph. It was hot. The kind of heat that makes you long for the weather to cool down. Now writing is subjective, but on a general scale, this is not great. Not saying I could do better, fiction writing is not easy, that's why I do this instead, but people have been absolutely tearing this book apart, and that is conveniently where the ghostwriter part of the equation gets left out of the discourse. Because everybody wanted to point out how she didn't write the book, and then the reviews came out, and all of a sudden people are treating it as if she wrote the entire book. And don't get it twisted, that's not me defending the book. Bad writing is bad writing, no matter who it comes from, and everyone has a right to critique what they're reading. It's part of the whole, you know, engagement with art process. And while it's clearly not the most groundbreaking piece of fiction ever written, the criticism that the book has received is much more complex than that due to the genre that she's operating in here. You see, historical fiction naturally means that while a story can be made up, there has to be real-world elements included in whatever it is you're writing about, things like setting or the dialect, and for the most part, it's on the responsibility of the author to make sure those things are accurate in order to give proper respect and credibility to those events in real life, especially if they're based on some sort of historical tragedy. But even as a curiosity piece, it's pretty tasteless. It's a goodies versus baddies account of World War II that uncritically praises figures such as Churchill and Montgomery. Brown gets the big facts right but utterly fails to grasp the historical period she's dealing with and has cheerfully imposed modern social mores and values onto the past. An unmarried mother is loved by all, and no one judges. Edith and I browsed the Millie Bobby Brown book at a bookshop today and the very first line we saw was World War II had torn apart many families perhaps none more than Nellie's. And aside from the abject criticism from actual reviewers, because everything on the internet is cyclical, Millie Bobby Brown has once again become a meme. Because after the first paragraph of her book went semi-viral on Twitter, people decided it would be funny to use that same tweet format and post other lines from other books out of context and it just got progressively more unhinged. Is this funny? Yes, but at the same time, I still can't help but feel kind of bad for Millie in regards to this whole situation. Because if I stepped out of my comfort zone and wrote a book only for people to be really 
relentlessly shitting on it, I'd be a little mortified and she's only 19 years old. It's the same reason why I fully believe in my delusional mind that I could absolutely body a stand-up comedy set, but you will never see me do one. Fuck putting yourself out there, people are mean. But at the same time, I get why people are frustrated by this. It's really hard to make a name for yourself in the creative industries and publishing is no exception. And you could argue that Millie Bobby Brown is theoretically taking a spot away from some indie writer who hasn't been discovered yet who would die for a publishing deal like hers. Plus, there's still somewhat of an ethical conundrum with a ghostwriter writing fiction and whether or not Millie can even be accountable for anything in this book at all. Regardless, I of course wish her the best because like I said, I feel like she's been dealt a really tough hand on the internet over the years. And I'm really curious to know your guys' thoughts on this one because I don't know much about the publishing industry and I know a lot of folks around here definitely do. And I'm personally torn on how I feel about the issue of ghostwriting and celebrity novels and the publishing industry in general. So if you have any thoughts on that, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I would love to read them. I know this was a short one today, guys, but I appreciate you sticking with me and I want to just mention a couple more things before I go. Feel free to follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. I post there all the time because I have a crippling addiction to that hell site. And if you notice, I posted quite a bit in September, so there is definitely a backlog of stuff for you to go watch because I'm taking the first week off in October. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I am prepping for my Halloween series. If you're new here, every October I do a series of three to four videos where I cover spooky themed pop culture things for Halloween and I do a costume along with each video. That takes a while for me to prep because I also work a full-time job. But yeah, keep an eye out for that. I'll be back the second week in October and don't worry, I'm still coming back quicker than the fifth and final season of Stranger Things. Um, yeah, I have a question for Tori Spelling. Again, Tori Spelling is not here, as, as I already explained. Tori Spelling's ghostwriter is here.